All right, a very warm welcome and thank you all for joining today's snapshot. Uh, the topic is Terraform Config Driven Import. My name is Jane and I am based in Singapore. So a quick overview of the agenda lined up for today. I will start with the challenges that we see some of our customers uh, face today. And then I'll introduce Config Driven Import. That is a way for you to address uh, some of those challenges they face. And I will walk you through how it works before showing it in a demo. And then finally, I'll wrap up with some supporting documentation. So let's get started with the challenge first. Let's imagine we're from a company that uses a mixture of ClickOps and some other automation tools. Uh, we also use some public cloud and we also have a private cloud estate and we use different platforms tool sets. And recently our central platform team has mandated the consolidation of tool sets to use Terraform as the single workflow to provision infrastructure in our multi-cloud footprint. And I guess you'll be thinking that this is quite a straightforward approach if you have greenfield infrastructure, meaning any net new workloads and resources can start utilizing Terraform modules, or you can even start writing Terraform config from scratch. However, for brownfield infrastructure, where resources already exist, there's a challenge there. You'll be thinking, how can we start importing all of that into Terraform in the simplest way possible so that we can leverage Terraform's lifecycle management, for example, day two CRUD operations. And also in Terraform Cloud, we have health assessments like drift detection and continuous validation. This problem is, or this challenge is actually quite common. Um, when we bring existing infrastructure under management by Terraform, uh, it's usually when you see onboarding of new teams and applications into a Terraform-based workflow, or even during a standardization effort when it comes with mergers and acquisitions of companies. So how do some people do it today? We have seen customers using Terraform import, the command, or other third-party tools. So this is the Terraform import command, which was previously a good first step in simplifying the migration to Terraform. Well, the issue with this is that your resources had to be imported one at a time. So you can see in the example here, we're only importing a VPC uh, into a destination test VPC. This uh, is one at a time is one challenge. Well, the other challenge is that you had to create the matching resource code manually. So there's a multi-step process here of running the apply, to identify the required attribute values so that you can achieve a clean run. And furthermore, this import was not supported for the VCS and UI-driven workflows in Terraform Cloud. So that means your state and your provider credentials, these had to be exposed uh, directly in the developer's local machine. And the most important part is that this method immediately modifies your state file. It doesn't give you the option of a plan before apply. Starting with Terraform 1.5, we have introduced this new feature called Config Driven Import. Firstly, you can import resources in bulk. So that's a lot more efficient compared to the previous import command. And it also allows you to review the planned import operations before you add it to state. So that allows for safer onboarding and eliminates the risk of any unexpected state modification. And it also works with Terraform Cloud. So that means your entire import workflow, your state, your credentials, they are all secure. And that reduces any risk. Uh, it eliminates the complexity of coordinating across multiple users. There is no conflicting operations, which may lead to resources being deleted. And it also supports all of the workflows, VCS, UL, UI, and CLI. And this part is what I'm most excited about is the auto-generated configuration that saves you a lot of time. So previously you had to uh, manually run a plan, reference documentation, update the configurations to match the imported resources. Uh, today that is all generated for you with just one command. So how does that work? The first step is to uh, add an import block. You can add this import block to your configuration uh, either in a separate file like import.tf or you can add it to an existing configuration.tf file. 
And it takes in two parameters. One is the ID and the other is the HCL address. So let's talk about the ID first. This ID argument would use the resources import ID so that Terraform can locate the resource you want to import. And it must be known at plan time uh, for it to succeed. The identifier you use here is actually resource specific. So you can find um, the required ID identifier in the provider documentation for the resource that you wish to import. The next argument is the to argument. So this will point to the address of the resource you will have in your state file. So that in future planning, uh, if the resource already exists in your state file, Terraform knows that it doesn't need to regenerate a configuration for the particular resource. And remember that on top of all this, you must, of course, add the provider block so that Terraform knows which provider you're using uh, to generate the configuration, else it will display an error saying it cannot determine which provider to use. So the next step is this command, Terraform plan, uh, with the flag generate config out and a file name to write your generated configuration into. So Terraform will display its plan for importing a resource and after which you can review your generated code. So a file will be generated for you and you can review it and update it as you need. So there may be instances where you want to move the generated config into another file. Maybe you want to add or remove certain arguments or perhaps even update reference input values or maybe you want to reference other resources in the configuration. After you've done all that and it looks good to go, you can simply run a normal plan and apply operation to complete that import to state. After which you can commit your new resource configuration to your VCS, whether it's GitHub, GitLab or anything else. So with that out of the way, let me show you how I execute it on the set of infrastructure that I've already deployed. I will show this entire workflow on TFC so you can see how the run history, the variables and the state files are all safely stored in Terraform Cloud. So firstly, let me begin by showing you my AWS account. I have deployed some resources here, such as a VPC and an EC2 instance and a few others. And I also have this on the left here, an imports.tf file. So in here, I'm specifying all my import blocks where I reference things like if it's the VPC, then I reference the VPC ID. And you can see that it matches with 29FA at the end. Or even my EC2 instance here where the ID ends with 3704B. So once I have this import block ready, all I have to do is run the command terraform plan generate config out generate the .tf. Prior to this, I had already run terraform init. And what the init does is it had created a workspace in my Terraform Cloud account. I can show that to you in my provider block here where I specified my Terraform Cloud organization, the workspace name to create. And of course, I have to specify my provider, which is AWS, which are where my resources are now deployed into. So looking at my Terraform Cloud workspace now, if I go into the Run tab, you can see that a plan has finished successfully and it had generated some configuration. You will find it both in the Terraform Cloud UI as well as in the directory that you ran the command in. Let's review that generated.tf file. You can see here that I have my things like my EIP, the association and the instance uh, configuration all generated for me. So what you would do as a, a developer after having done this, you would want to clean this up a little bit. You can do things like delete certain attributes or arguments that are not required. Or you can update some of them, or you can even reference one to the other. So for example, my EIP should be referencing the instance that has been, that's not under Terraform's management. So I would then reference that instance ID here. 
So once you clean it up and it looks good, you simply have to run a Terraform plan and Terraform apply. So I'm just going to skip the plan and just show you apply here. You can see that the remote apply is happening and that is actually happening in my Terraform cloud once again. So if I open up my run history, you will see a new run happening here. And all of that is happening um, using the variables that is stored in Terraform Cloud. So I have stored my AWS keys uh, safely inside my workspace variables. So there's nothing stored on my local machine here. And once that apply has completed, I'll show you that the state file is also directly uploaded into Terraform Cloud. So that will not be managed on your laptop as well. Now that apply has finished, I can go to my workspace states and I can see that a new state has been created and uploaded into Terraform Cloud. And that's it. It was really simple. I managed to import eight resources into uh, Terraform's management and everything in Terraform Cloud. So there are some points you might want to consider if you use config-driven import. Firstly is that TF import uses the current state of your infrastructure that is reported by the provider. It cannot determine things like the health of your infrastructure. You also want to make sure that you review your plan output carefully and also make backups of your state file if required. And I also mentioned just now that related resources must be manually changed so that you can add relationships to the configuration. And you also want to check any default attributes that have to be set. And always, always check the provider documentation on what is supported, uh, what are some supported resources that can be imported, as well as any um, gotchas that might come along the way. So I will conclude today's snapshot with some documentation, a tutorial and a blog post link here for you to check out, and you can try it out for yourself. Thank you very much.